Have you ever noticed that when you're finally doing well, you're on top of your goals, your exercise is getting done, and your house is clean, that you suddenly get hit with a migraine or some other type of chronic pain? If you have bipolar disorder, I bet you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever wanted to know why this happens, that's what I'm talking about in today's video, the mysterious link between bipolar disorder and chronic pain. I'm Patty. I have bipolar disorder and ADHD. I make videos to share my blue energy and to educate people about mental health. Why do we have so much pain with bipolar disorder? One reason is that we have an overreactive immune system that causes constant inflammation. But another possibility is that the neural pathways that cause depression are remarkably similar to the pathways that cause pain. The link between bipolar disorder and chronic pain is still somewhat mysterious, but we do know that bipolar disorder can manifest with physical symptoms of pain and that several chronic pain conditions are closely associated with bipolar disorder. Migraines are the most common chronic pain condition associated with bipolar disorder, but there's more to it. People with bipolar disorder also have a higher risk of other chronic pain conditions like fibromyalgia and rheumatoid arthritis. Let's take a deeper look. Research in the American Journal of Managed Care has uncovered a connection between bipolar disorder and migraines. During migraine attacks, our bodies produce more pro-inflammatory cytokines, which increase inflammation. Cytokines are molecules in our body that regulate inflammation. Pro-inflammatory cytokines encourage inflammation and anti-inflammatory cytokines reduce inflammation. We think that people with bipolar disorder have an imbalance of these cytokines and this may be why so many of us also get migraines. In fact, if you have bipolar disorder, you're three and a half times more likely to get migraines and your bipolar symptoms tend to be more severe. The link between bipolar disorder and migraines isn't entirely clear, but it might be related to our overreactive immune system. Inflammation occurs in both the manic and depressive phases of bipolar disorder, but especially during our manic episodes. Bipolar disorder can disrupt our immune response, causing us to either make too many pro-inflammatory cytokines or too few anti-inflammatory ones. These inflammatory cytokines tend to fluctuate significantly in people with bipolar disorder. This may explain why we experience so much inflammation and pain, and also why our moods tend to shift after a migraine. Essentially, our heightened immune response during a manic episode leads to high levels of inflammation, which in turn triggers our migraine attacks. Then, the intense pain impacts our mood, causing it to change from manic to depressed. This process is influenced both by physiological changes in inflammation and psychological factors, as pain often affects mood and energy levels regardless of having bipolar disorder. Rheumatoid arthritis causes chronic inflammation and joint pain due to the body's immune system mistakenly attacking its own tissues. This autoimmune response results in widespread inflammation and painful arthritis symptoms. While the link between rheumatoid arthritis and bipolar disorder isn't as clear-cut as with migraines, both conditions involve dysfunction of the immune system and inflammation. People with rheumatoid arthritis are twice as likely to develop bipolar disorder, highlighting a connection between autoimmune disorders and mood disorders. Bipolar disorder is also linked to other autoimmune conditions like lupus, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and inflammatory bowel disease, suggesting the immune system's influence on our moods. Fibromyalgia is a chronic pain condition affecting the entire body, causing pain, tenderness, fatigue, and sleep issues. It also causes other symptoms, including brain fog, anxiety, or depression. These symptoms, including pain, can also be seen in bipolar disorder, although some researchers think this may be a separate syndrome and not fibromyalgia. 25% of fibromyalgia sufferers also have bipolar disorder. Interestingly, 
In both conditions, you see higher levels of pro-inflammatory cytokines and abnormalities in a specific region of the brain that regulates our stress response, mood, and metabolism. Let's talk a little more about the relationship between bipolar disorder and chronic pain. Chronic pain is often comorbid with bipolar disorder. One study found that half the people that have bipolar disorder also experience chronic pain and two thirds of women experience chronic pain. Another study looked at veterans with bipolar disorder and they found that veterans with bipolar disorder were five times more likely to experience migraines and 10 times more likely to experience psychogenic pain. One key link between bipolar disorder and chronic pain is inflammation. Studies show that our immune system tends to overreact, causing constant inflammation. Inflammation is the way our body responds to injury or threats. It often causes pain as a signal for attention. For example, if you have a sprained ankle, the pain signals your body to rest and protect the injured area. Chronic pain doesn't just hurt physically. It also affects our mood. It can lead to symptoms such as depression, anxiety, fatigue, and difficulty sleeping, collectively known as sickness behavior. These changes in mood and energy can make the symptoms of bipolar disorder worse and can make it more challenging to manage. Untreated bipolar mania can result in higher levels of inflammation, leading to a vicious cycle of mania followed by severe pain and depression. In order to reduce chronic pain and the episodes of bipolar depression, it is important to manage both the physical and emotional symptoms of bipolar disorder. Another reason we experience so much pain is because of something called psychogenic pain. Psychogenic pain is a term for pain that's caused by emotional trauma, stress, or psychological reasons. While nobody wants to hear that their pain is all in their head, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that chronic pain may be a result of suppressed emotional trauma, stress, or repressed emotions. In Dr. John Sarno's book, The Mind-Body Prescription, Healing the Body, Healing the Pain, he discusses a syndrome called tension myositis syndrome, suggesting that chronic pain often stems from psychogenic pain created in the brain. Although this concept might initially sound implausible, it is supported by substantial evidence. Emotional trauma likely plays a significant role in chronic pain for those of us with bipolar disorder. Dr. Howard Schubiner, an expert in psychophysiological disorders, explains that chronic pain often arises from learned neural pathways rather than structural issues. These neural pathways are brain connections that process sensations, including pain. When we repeatedly experience pain, our brain creates and reinforces these neural pathways, leading to a cycle of pain. Remarkably, the pathways responsible for pain are similar to those that cause depression, which explains why pain and depression tend to go hand in hand. In order to teach our brain to quit using these learned neural pathways, we have to retrain our brain. This is done through specific mindfulness practices that help us to unlearn these misguided pathways that create pain. Now for some tips on managing chronic pain with bipolar disorder. One of the best ways to reduce chronic pain is to reduce the number of manic or hypomanic episodes we have. Remember, mania tends to make our inflammation worse. So one of the things we often do after we've had an episode of pain is we try to catch up with everything. I know that I do. If I've had a really bad migraine that's kept me in the bed for several days, I will try to catch up on everything once I start feeling better. I may manic clean my house or stay up late working on projects, but I will do too much after an episode of pain. And this is what you don't wanna do you want to control the hypomania. And so to do that, you need to keep some things consistent. And one of those things is going to bed on time, which I talk about in every video. So make sure that after you've had an episode of pain, you don't overdo it. Keep your sleep schedule consistent. Take your meds every day at the same time, or at least as much as possible. And for me, I follow the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is what keeps um, me more stable and helps me manage both my chronic pain and my mood disorder.
You're also going to want to try to reduce inflammation. I have left some tips on how to reduce inflammation as well as resources on how to manage chronic pain if you have bipolar disorder. I have left that in a blog post which I've linked to in the description down below. Now I do want to mention one thing you may want to talk to your doctor about and that is taking a low dose of aspirin. This has been found to be helpful both in reducing depression symptoms and reducing inflammation. And unlike other NSAIDs, it doesn't seem to affect lithium levels. So this is one you may want to talk to your doctor about. Now, if you've watched this whole video and would like to see more content like this, I would really appreciate you supporting my channel by clicking the subscribe button or checking out some of my other videos.